I think one of the interesting and challenging things about anti-angiogenic agents is that we aren't entirely sure how these agents work in practice. There's preclinical data that suggests that these agents help to prune the blood supply to the tumor and can lead to uh, at least a limitation of growth and potentially uh, some shrinkage of the cancer that way. But in addition, that it actually changes the blood supply so that agents given with the anti-angiogenic agents are delivered more effectively. It can increase oxygen, uh, oxygenation to the tumor, and all of this can net lead to a greater uh, killing effect of, uh, of the cancer when uh, given in combination with, uh, with the cytotoxic agent. Anti-angiogenic agents can be in the form of monoclonal antibodies given IV or as oral uh, small molecules, tyrosine kinase inhibitors. The ones in the setting of advanced non-small cell lung cancer that have been best studied are actually the uh, monoclonal antibodies. So we have bevacizumab, uh, and we also have uh, ramacirumab, and uh, there are also some small molecules like uh, nesitumumab. But uh, at this point in the U.S., we really have not uh, adopted nesitumumab, though there are data to support using it in previously treated patients, and it is FDA approved in Europe. We need to better clarify if there are significant differences in efficacy tolerability. Overall, they have more similarities than differences, I would say, in, in broad strokes.